Hi everybody, this is James Tompkins and welcome to another Understanding Finance Nugget. And today what I want to do is derive the present value of a perpetuity. So, first of all, there are some prerequisites, and that is, if you're going to understand what I do today, you need to understand these two nuggets right here if you don't already know them. Uh, one's titled Two Rates Commonly Used in Time Value Money Equations, that's about the effective periodic rate and the nominal or stated or advertised rate. And the other is driving the only single cash flow formula that exists. So we're going to build on single cash flow principles. So basically, there is a perpetuity right here, equal cash flows between equal time periods forever. And basically, what this formula is going to do is, is it's going to take all of these cash flows and it's going to crush them into one single number at a specific time period. So in this example right here, there exists a discount rate such that mathematically you'd be indifferent between all of these cash flows right here and one single number right here in this example at time zero. So that's what we're going to drive. So let's say you're given $100 today. And let's say the effective annual interest rates, imagine these are annual periods, they don't have to be, but let's just say the effective annual rate is 10%. Now, now what's an effective annual rate? The amount of interest made from $1 after, in this example, one year. Okay, so it's 10%. <clears throat> so 100 bucks, 10%, how much cash are you going to have in one year? Well, $110, right? So that's just using single cash flow principles. So using the only single cash flow formula that exists, we're solving for a future value, so 100 times 1 plus 0.1, or $110. So let's say at time one you say, you know what, I think I'm going to spend $10 and I'm going to leave $100 sitting in the bank. So $100 stays in the bank and you get to spend $10. <clears throat> so at time two, what will this $100 grow into? Well, the rate's 10%, right? So $110, right? And let's say again, you know what? Let's spend $10 and we'll keep $100 sitting in the bank. So therefore, at this point, we began with $100. We had to wait for a whole year before we could first spend 10 and then we spent another 10 a year later. Now, given this discount rate of 10%, or this effective annual rate of 10%, could this $100 support basically $10 of spending forever? It could, right? I mean, I could just continue this pattern. And so, therefore, what we see is that $100 at time zero, given this effective rate, basically supports $10 forever. Now notice that this $100 is also 10 divided by the 0.1. So what we've done is we've just figured out the present value of a perpetuity. So if I use symbols, if I call C the repeated cash flow, if I call R the effective periodic rate, and this PV of perpetuity, the present value of the perpetuity, then, then the formula is basically C over R, but note, okay, if the first $100 is at time one, then is the solution at the same time period or one time period earlier? Well, it's one time period earlier, right? Now, now how, how do you know that? Why is it one time period earlier? Well, the only way you know it is because of the derivation. And now you understand it. You understand that you had to have $100 at time zero and, and then did you have to wait a whole year before it would grow into 110 for when you could first spend that 110? You did, right? So in the application of this formula, the solution is always one time period earlier than the first cash flow. So what would you rather have? Given this effective rate of 10%, would you rather have $10 beginning at time one going on forever or $100 at time zero? Now you might say, well, I'd rather have $100 at time zero because I'm not going to live forever, or 
or maybe you want to spend it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Or, all right, you're right. You're not going to live forever, okay? But imagine if you were going to live forever. Well, the fact is, if you did have a preference, it would be based on some sort of personal feeling or, or, or sense of satisfaction or whatever. But mathematically, are these two sets of cash flows identically equivalent? They are, right? I mean, that's what the time value of money stuff does. So in, in this case, the perpetuity formula takes all of these cash flows and mathematically, given this effective rate, crushes them into one single number at one single time period. Now, I would argue, if you want to call it, there's two traps in this formula. Number one is that if these are six-month periods, for example, then you better be working with what kind of of an effective rate, an effective six-month rate, right? So in other words, the time periods, that's what I mean by this T, the time periods, and the effective rate has, has to match. So, so if these are six-month periods, which, which again means what? The amount of interest made from one dollar after six months. So if a dollar, for example, grows into a dollar five after six months, then the effective six-month rate is what? Five percent. So in the application of this formula, the, the time periods and the effective rate have to match. And then the other thing is basically in the application, as we've already mentioned, if, if the first cash flow is at time one, then the solution is what time period? Time zero. What if the first cash flow had been at time three? What if these guys were not there? Then what would the solution be? At time two, right? So in any case, step number one, you can apply the per perpetuity formula to crush it into one single number at one single time period. And then, if you want to, can you use single cash flow principles to move this anywhere along the timeline you want to? You could, right? So for example, if we were working with the same numbers we worked with before, what we had here was $100 at time zero. And the question said, well, what is it worth at time one? Well, to move the $100 forward one time period, it'd be equivalent to $110 at time one, right? So in any case, that's the derivation in the present value of a perpetuity. And in the next nugget, I'll, I'll go over a, a, a problem. Anyway, I hope this was useful for you, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in, in other nuggets. Take care. Bye-bye.